is Vocations Sunday, and so I thought I'd write to you as you approach the day of your own priestly ordination. I'm also mindful uh, that I will soon celebrate the 25th anniversary of my own ordination. Uh, these events are an opportunity to reflect on the beauty of our vocation and the responsibility of helping others to see the invisible. I've always imagined the priesthood as a call to be a water bearer and an ambassador. Now let me try and explain. Wherever we are sent, whatever we are called to do, whoever we meet, we are simply to make Christ known to others. In an age of anxiety and division, people thirst for the peace and unity that only Christ can give. Priests help quench those tormenting thirsts. We are water diviners, boring for the wells of salvation and carrying the waters of God's grace to lips that are cracked. If anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, of these my disciples, truly I tell you, that person will suddenly not lose their reward. Amen to that. If we are to be water bearers, then we are also commissioned to be ambassadors for Christ. We are to cross borders and to set up in alien lands. The individuals and the tribes that we will encounter there, we must not treat with suspicion or as adversaries, but we must develop the maturity to listen to them without fear. Our responses will be free of bitter polemic or lazy caricature. We are to pray for the gift of the disciples' serene tongue and to entrust everything to God. And for this to happen, our parishes are to be embassies of hope, where all people will be welcomed and treated with kindness. Sacred sanctuaries where people can lay down their burdens, celebrate and give thanks for their joys and encounter the crucified and risen Christ. It's true that for many of our contemporaries, these embassies will appear to be religious follies. Our priesthood will be lived in a culture of unbelief. The things that we hold of eternal value the things of God will appear largely incomprehensible to the society around us. The vestiges of respect for the church will fade and we will be treated with indifference. We will have no rank or status. We will be no more than we are meant to be. Our embassies will not be found on central avenues or in leafy squares, but will be scattered outside the city walls. It is there that we will commit ourselves to the people we find living there. We will be honorary consuls to the little ones, to the bruised and hurting, to the lonely and dying, to those who struggle to believe that there is anything to hope for, to those who doubt that virtue and love are possible. And it is there amongst these people that we will learn a little humility. And when they gather to listen to us, let's speak to them with great gentleness. There are enough words that seek to rubbish and to cut down. Let us speak the truth in love. Teach softly. May our preaching be the balm of Gilead and the fire of the Easter night. And in all this, we must allow our hearts to be pierced. And from their wounds, 
will flow blood and water. The life of the sacraments and the fountainhead of the spirit. It will not be inflated pious talk or bullish religious swagger that will convince people that we are envoys of God's grace, but that our hearts have been pierced through, that we know something of the mystery of the cross. Only when we have nailed our own self-interest to the cross will we be raised up and people will glimpse something of the glory of God breaking through our lives. And at that moment, we will no longer be a hired man, but a shepherd to the people of God, feeding them with the bread of life, blessing their joys and sorrows, guiding them through those valleys of darkness. With Christ always leading us onwards and we his priests at the rear encouraging the stragglers and the weary making sure that no one is left behind. The true ambassador will always be obedient to Christ. Our integrity as priests will be recognized above all in this obedience. We, like Christ, are to be obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Only then do we entrust ourselves freely and with total submission to the will of God. And this is expressed in a concrete manner in our cooperation with our bishop. If we do not learn obedience, then we will never acquire the maturity that self-denial gives and the sacrifice that the cross demands of each one of us. Above all, the heart of our lives as priestly ambassadors is prayer. Everything that you have been taught and practiced in seminary is true. I didn't always believe that as a seminarian, but I do now. I suspect most of our prayers as priests are simply prayers of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for the gift and mission given to us by Christ. Thanksgiving for the fragile and resilient souls entrusted to our care. Being a priest is a wonderful and blessed life. But we shouldn't romanticise our vocation. When we feel the bite of loneliness and the pain of failure, when the folly of bearing the burdens of others weighs heavy on us, when we long for our own front door and are wrung out by the mission, then we need to return to prayer. It is there that our happiness will be restored. It will be there that we regain a true sense of who we are and the beautiful vocation that we have been called to by Christ. For me, the writer Evelyn Underhill succinctly expresses this truth. She writes, the unique source of the priest's spiritual power is prayer. Other things, intellectual and social aptitudes, good preaching, a capacity for organization, help his work and help much. None of these, however, is essential. Prayer is. Prayers for you, Michael, as you prepare to be ordained to the dignity of the priesthood. You will be such a great gift to the church and we thank God for your generosity. You will now join the ranks of those ambassadors whose faithfulness and quiet lives of selfless service go largely unrecognized and uncommented upon. Their simple 
priestly commitment authenticates their witness in a profound way. My advice to you is learn from them. May the graces you receive at ordination flood your soul and make your mission fruitful and bountiful. May you always be a faithful water carrier. Be careful not to lose a drop. Every glass of water you offer, every thirst you quench, give life and offer glory to God.